Hello divinities, you're watching Awaken Comedic Divinity. My name is Jay Simone and I share spirituality tips for the newly awakened to help them build a better spiritual foundation. So today's video is going to be on a book review for Psychic Witch. Now I've been wanting to do this review for some time and as you can see I have a lot of notes here on the book. Um, don't worry the video will not be on every single note. Now I will say right off the bat that uh, this is definitely a good book for beginners into their spiritual journey regardless of whether or not you identify as a witch. Reason for that being is that I feel like this book definitely makes a good outline of sensing energy and getting used to energies and also your psychic and spiritual abilities. So I definitely recommend this book for everyone whether or not you identify as a witch make sure it's on your shelf. I actually really, really like this one. And as you can see, it's pretty beat up because I've read it a lot. I've actually, okay, so I've read it twice, but then I still go back and I find myself looking at like different exercises and stuff. So cannot recommend this book enough, just right off the bat, five out of five. But that being said, I have more to say on this book. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video. So that way you catch everything that I like about this book to see if this book is going to be a good fit for you and your spiritual journey. So my initial thoughts on this book is that I came to the spiritual community already thinking that there was a, like I already saw a tie between spirituality and witchcraft or like psychic ability in witchcraft witchcraft specifically but like magic in general I just say witchcraft because it's the general most recognized term for people but I just mean like spirituality in general for any spiritual pr practitioner there is a link between your psychic abilities and your practice and I've also always thought that various practices are similar or overlap that's not to say that like you know Becky can go now practice hoodoo or anything like that please don't Becky but if you for example are friends with someone that does practice hoodoo or African spirituality, you'll see that you have some overlap with their practices, even if you work with the Greek pantheon or the Celtic pantheon, whichever pantheon you choose to work with. I think that Matt Arun, the author of the book, does a really good job of taking the concepts that are used in cosmology for different spiritual practices, removing like the identifying terms that would tie them to a specific cosmology or specific practice, tying them all together to relate them all so that everyone can incorporate them and use their own cosmology of their practice and apply it to whichever one they identify with on top of his. So he he gives us the bare bones and then from there we get to create whatever we want from that. Which is a brilliant idea because if you are taking time to educate yourself on other spiritual practices, which I definitely recommend just because it gives you a different light to see things, you'll kind of see different overlaps. Even when I was more focused on religion as opposed to spirituality, I would notice that a lot of spiritual practices had a lot of overlap and a lot of similar ideas and thoughts. Sorry, I'm cold and I'm glancing off at my notes here. So I feel like Matt does a really good job of making a book so that everyone can relate to it and identify with it while also respecting different practices and stuff like that. I also think that he does a very good job at em emphasizing basics and fundamentals, not just through his introduction, but throughout the book. He makes it very clear that a lot of these exercises build on one another, but also that you want to go back and do like the beginner exercises and do those often so that way you have that strong foundation. This book is a great book for beginners if they find themselves lost and they first start their spiritual journey, if they don't know where to start. I would, I would think that this would be okay. Like. If you were to take away anything from any of my videos, I would take away this book here, Psychic Witch, just because I feel like you can do a lot with the information in it. It can apply to a lot of different things. And I think that the knowledge in it, you're going to find yourself applying on a constant basis throughout your practice. I feel like a lot of people are predisposed to sensing energy and it can be very frustrating if you're someone that is not. So I definitely feel like this book can kind of help you be a little bit more sensitive and teach you how to be more sensitive to energies. However, if you're someone that's sensitive already to energies, this book can help you get a better control of that ability so it's not affecting you. For example, if you're empathetic and you're picking up a lot of negative energies or energy vampires, this book will help you with cutting that out or like decreasing that in your life. I also feel like a lot of practitioners on public platforms talk about energy sensing and energy manipulation through their craft, but then they don't discuss how they became trained to sense it. And even on page five, he mentions the importance 
importance of being able to sense the energies because it does help you with your practice. Relating to that, Matt also makes it very clear that he believes that anyone has psychic abilities. So if you're someone who doesn't think that they have psychic ability, that's not true. Everyone has an ability. Um, everyone has access to all abilities. It's just that some of us are more gifted in certain areas than others, but we can all still gain insight into those other abilities, access those other abilities. It's just a matter of practice. And he does have an example of that within this book as well. He talks about how someone may be naturally gifted at something, but if they never work at that natural gift, they may never improve. Whereas someone who doesn't have that natural gift, if they still work very hard at gaining an ability or skill, they can be very good at it, even better than the naturally gifted person. But that's only because they put in the time and effort to cultivate it. All right, Devaney, so you may be asking yourself, what makes this book different from other spirituality books, especially ones that are meant to teach you, quote unquote, witchcraft, things like that. The first things that stand out to me on this book are that the introduction definitely gives a good idea of the author and its credentials, because I'll be honest, I don't know who Matt Arun is, and I'm probably saying his name wrong, so I apologize, but I, I don't personally know who he is. But as someone who doesn't know who he is, having that introduction of knowing that he is very well practiced and versed in both aspects of psychic abilities and also witchcraft is very reassuring because he does point out that like a lot of people in the craft don't really practice or put two and two together. So by him saying that he's on both sides of the spectrum, it kind of gives you a better idea of this person is coming to talk about something that he knows about, he's experienced in. I will say that Matt approaches this from a Wiccan perspective, but as mentioned previously, as like one of the good points of this book is that he does a great job of giving you the bare bones and making this applicable to any spiritual practice and I do firmly believe that a lot of spiritual practices have a lot of relations and ties to one another regardless of whether you're practicing comedic spirituality or you're practicing with a different pantheon. I think a lot of practices overlap and share key components that keep them very similar however like again I do want to like give respect to the different cultures that are here that make up this spiritual realm. Now, I want to also add to that point that though I don't identify as Wiccan, I definitely feel like the ideas in this book and Matt acknowledging the different paths that come to spirituality make the information in this book super important, super key to your practice. And I also think he does a good job, especially on page six of the book, dating, like, like I said, he gives you a very basic overview of everything so that way you can apply whatever practice you follow to it. Another thing I appreciate about this book is Matt's openness to losing interest in your practice. Um, a lot of us can go through and experience burnout and I feel like him being open about that and expressing that is very realistic touch to the book. I feel like not very many spiritual practitioners really go over the burnout situation or feeling disconnected from their craft. I think that Matt's addressing of the disconnection definitely gives the book more relatability. I think that it also kind of emphasizes the need for why one needs to balance both their psychic abilities and their craft, their practice, however they want to do it, because they both are intertwined and go together. As someone that has gone through like a period of burnout in parts of my practice, such as like I have a burnout on tarot, I've like been avoiding it because she's that and later in the video. Even though I've been burnt out on tarot, I've still been following through other areas of my practice. And I think that Matt does a good job of emphasizing that this book is something that you can come to if you get to burnout and can make use of the beginner exercises and just always go fall back to those. And that's one way to keep your practice new and exciting. I also think that by addressing burnout, he lets beginners know that they may eventually feel disconnected from their craft. And I think giving them that realistic view as opposed to them thinking, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have magic everywhere. Like my entire house is gonna be magic. I think that him doing that gives a very realistic setup for a beginner so that the beginner doesn't get burnt out too. Um, especially since a lot of people jump into spirituality and don't really look at the main point of spirituality, which is to go inward and go into self and kind of like do your inner work. A lot of people get into spirituality just so they can immediately like do manifestations and stuff. I feel like Matt does a really good job of giving the knowledge and teachings that will in turn weed out people who are genu genuinely interested in spirituality and growing spiritually versus people who are just trying to do it as a fad. I also want to say that Matt does a really good job at being an ally on this book. On page five, I have found that there are many ways around certain culturally specific practices without appropriating them as our own. 
simply by using a cosmological system that is a bit more universal in nature. As I mentioned before, this is something I agree with because, like I said, I do think a lot of spiritual practices are connected and tied together, but at the same time, I don't think that Aaron can just immediately jump into hoodoo. I think that people need to honor the spiritual practices of the ancestors and spiritual beings that are with them for their journey. However, I do want to like put out there if a deity is called to you to get your attention to work with them. I mean, I'm not going to stop you there. I'm not going to say, hey, don't do that. Like, y'all can do whatever you want. I'm just a person on the internet reading books and giving you information because you haven't read the book yet yourself or you just haven't decided on if you want to buy the book. This is a really good book. And the other thing is like Matt's addressing of how he sets up the bare bones cosmology for everyone to use. Um, he makes it applicable for people that don't believe in deities or anything like that as well. So like anyone that's atheist can easily find a way to apply this to them. Another thing I like about this book, and I mentioned this in other videos too, is that he does focus on not having tools with this book. One thing that I think is super important to anyone's spiritual practice is knowing that tools are not needed. You just need you. So Matt's focus on doing this book, like the exercise in this book without tools is great. I think it helps you learn your own inner power to begin with, as opposed to thinking that your power is tied to some crystal, some necklace, some rock, some wand, whatever it is that you decide to use for your practice. And especially since, like, you know, there may be times when you find yourself without your tools, but you still want to be able to do some sort of magic, in which case I definitely think that this book gives you the necessary tools to have you be confident in anything that you do without tools. Actually, personally, I like doing a lot of my practice without tools because I want to have that reminder that I do not need a tool in order to work something. I like the reminder that I am drawing from my own power for example and this is really easy and this is like even if you aren't outside you can always connect with the power of the earth even if you're like on a plane in the air you can always connect with the power of the earth and you can always connect with the power of the universe and that's super important to me because for example i feel like i need to do a working i have no tools of course i don't want to use my own energy because that will just drain me I can always call on the powers of the universe, of the earth. You know, you can call on powers of different cosmic energies, like you can work with the powers of the planets, in which case kind of goes into astrology. But yes, you can work with the different powers of the planets. You can work with the your spiritual team. I mean, of course, make sure you're giving thanks to all of these things, like practice an attitude of gratitude with all of these entities and energies that you're able to work with, just because, like I said, you're not using your own energy energy from this to keep from draining yourself and so by giving thanks for them allowing you to use their energy you're just showing them respect. I like that the intro on page 7 finishes off with regardless of where you are on your path ensure that your daily spiritual magical routine involves deepening into the basics. I said before I feel like basics are super important fundamental and fundamentals are what build your foundation for you to grow in your practice Think of it as like a tree, you need strong roots in order to grow a big strong tree. I may later do a video on building a spiritual routine, but I also wanted to add that this kind of reminds me of like when I used to play violin, we would regularly practice doing scales because knowing the scales was key to making sure that we could then do any of the other music that we played. Or in the words of Matt, which he mentioned in the sentence prior, on page seven, can't build a magnificent structure on a weak foundation and expect it to stand the test of time. So that is why he, I, and many other practitioners are super focused on basics because you want to be able to build that strong foundation. Now, another thing that I found in this book that was very, very useful was that I feel that Matt does a great job of discussing psychic ability and intuition. He explains that it's very common for like people to use the two interchangeably, but I think that how he breaks it down as dividing them, like dividing them into two separate things is extremely important. The reason I say that is because to me, as I've studied like chakras and also this book and like spiritual abilities, I feel like psychic abilities, intuition, and spiritual abilities do come in or are related to different chakras. So I feel like intuition goes more to your sacral chakra because it's like the gut feeling that you get. 
whereas you know your psychic abilities may be more applicable to your third eye and then your spiritual abilities are more applicable to your crown chakra of course that's my personal thought some some of you may see it differently some of you may have um, different advice if you do comment below so that way i can see that because i would like to hear you guys' thoughts on that but yes there i feel like there is a difference between them all and i feel like the way that matt explains it and applies it in the book is definitely very very helpful i also feel like the way that we currently address the difference between intuition psychic abilities and spiritual abilities within the community i feel like a lot of people are focused on third eye psychic abilities spiritual abilities and like intuition and stuff like that and while i do think it's like good to worry about like, abilities associated with your upper chakras i also think we do need to stop putting so much emphasis on our upper chakras like sure they do lead us to have very cool gifts and stuff but I also think the lower chakras are just as important. Actually, they are just as important. The reason for that being is that the lower chakras ground you here in this plane of existence, and that is something that you need in order to fulfill your soul contract. I also think, and he explains this later, that the lower chakras also help ground you in general, which becomes important because if you spend all of your time in your upper chakras, you will get unbalanced. You'll start to feel very out of it or like you're floating on clouds or something like that. You won't feel present here in the moment, which again, we're spiritual people, but we're here to have a human experience. And so to have that human experience, you need to be down here on earth being focused. And that's what your lower chakras help you do. I bring up chakras is because I just studied chakras before I got to this book. And though Matt doesn't specifically discuss chakras, which makes sense, he tries to make this very applicable to all different practices. Chakras are what I most relate to. So they're very mainstream. So a lot of people are able to understand them and interpret them. Um, but a lot of people do use that ideology to do spiritual workings. That also does a good job of emphasizing that you may or may not be in touch with your abilities already when you start reading this book. And I definitely think that's super important because some people may feel like they may not have any skill whatsoever. So I think he does a very good job at coming to them and reassuring them. And I also think that's like extremely important because one thing that you learn through your spiritual practice as you begin is what you tell yourself will be your deciding factor as to like whether or not you're going to succeed or fail spirituality i definitely think like even if you don't believe in magical aspects spirits and stuff like that it will come down to your thought processes like especially with manifestation your thought processes it'll come down to internal view of yourself versus what others think of you and everything like that like what what your inner dialogue is will affect your life and so i think by saying that he kind of gives you that idea that you need to be very aware of what you're telling yourself what you say to yourself it's subtle and it doesn't really get touched on too too much but it is something that you start to recognize like as you get deeper in your practice and like i said he points out that like everyone has these abilities some people may be stronger in certain areas than others but he gives you the exercises to strengthen certain areas if you're weak in them and he also emphasizes that like if someone is born with some ability but they don't like ever practice or strengthen that ability then what good is it whereas if someone doesn't have the ability but they train and train and train to get that ability and they put in that work and effort they would essentially have a better ability than someone who was born with it and just didn't try. Now chapter one, Matt wastes no time in getting us started with exercises that we can start to use immediately along with just giving us a basic metaphysical overview of everything that he's going to address in the book. And I really appreciate his approach of childlike learning to this book because I've mentioned this in a lot of videos and I try to say this often. You do want to come to spirituality or really anything that you do with childlike mentality a uh, mentality of always ready to learn believing that everything is possible stuff like that a reason you want that is because you're setting yourself up for success because you aren't worried about failure you don't care that could mess up or do anything like that instead you're having faith in your ability to do something along with seeing it as a learning experience from which you can have a takeaway from like regardless of the outcome 
Another thing that I like about this book is that it does come with a lot of diagrams and drawings and stuff that you can apply so that way you have visuals to get a better idea of what you're working with, which I think is super helpful because personally some days when I read stuff I may be able to read it perfectly fine but my brain may not be able to put two and two together. So the diagrams help for like the days that like I struggle with putting two and two together. And if you're someone that spends more time struggling putting two and two together, nothing against that, but the diagrams definitely give you a good outline and idea as to what you're seeing, how he's explaining it, what he means by it and stuff like that. Whereas like you wouldn't get that if you were just straight reading it with no diagrams. I also think that these diagrams are helpful in terms of visualization because visualization is a key technique and key component of spiritual practice. I definitely think it is something super important that beginners should start practicing right off the bat. I think the diagrams will help you with just starting off with utilizing visualization as you enter your practice and start your practice. A lot of these exercises in this book do build on one another. I do try to keep some of these exercises in my own daily practice as well. I haven't so much lately because my daily practice is a little off. I blame my current medication setup right now as to why like my entire body's just fucked up. Anyways, but one of the practices I like is like the focus practice which is counting from 100 to 0 and the elemental breathing practice. I like to do the elemental breathing practice whenever I get um, anxious or stressed out. I've always been a very big advocate for breath work. I like breathing exercises. I feel like they help me with my anxiety personally, like a non-medicated way to help with my anxiety. That's not to say I don't take medication for the anxiety. I definitely take medication for the anxiety because otherwise your girl wouldn't sleep. Your girl would be over here thinking that the world is on fire when everything's legitimately fine. Your girl would probably be in her bed not doing anything and still be thinking that she needs to get up and do everything but be panicking about the amount of everything that she needs to do. So with that in mind I definitely think that a lot of benefit comes from doing these exercises and doing breath work as a practice. I want to eventually do a video on breath work. I need more time to research. That's essentially what a lot of these videos come down to is me having time to research. But if you haven't like done breath work before he definitely gives you some good starting exercises that I definitely think are useful. I definitely recommend researching breath work if you ever get the chance. I know that there are two popular or well-known breath exercises such as the Wim Hof method and holotropic breathing which I'm under the impression that holotropic breathing is supposed to give you like a altered state of consciousness because of how they have you breathe. But I also know that learning those techniques can be a little much. Like holotropic breathing, you're not recommended to do it unless you like go to one of their seminars or whatever and learn how to do it and practice it with the people around you and stuff. Hoff method, I think you need to like, I think you need to read his book, but there may be YouTubers out there that cover the Wim Hof method. But regardless, I think that the breathwork exercises Matt has in this book, along with some of the ones that I like occasionally will link on my Facebook page, along with like ones that I'll probably like put a link to up here. I definitely think that breathwork is key, breathwork helps you, breathwork is a good thing to incorporate into your practice, and you can literally do breathwork at any point in time. You can do it whether you are in the shower, you can do it while you're driving, you can do it, granted you want to be careful if you do it while you're driving because if you're going to pass out, like if you're doing a breathing exercise that has a chance of you passing out, don't do breathwork while you're driving. Do like, so like one of my favorite breathwork exercises is Inhale for four seconds, hold for four seconds, exhale for four seconds. And sometimes I'll even do a hold on that exhale for four seconds, but typically not because your girl has small lungs, so she really can only do like a triangle of that. But when you do that, breath work met like messes with like your internal body chemistry or like your nervous system it activates I want to say your vagus nerve I believe is the nerve that it activates and so it produces this feeling of calm by forcing yourself to breathe at a different rate than what you may be breathing at now to receive in more oxygen your body will recognize that it's not in flight or fight so you'll start to calm down overall. Now, like I said before, I don't see this as a cure-all and I don't use it as a cure-all. I still take a bunch of anxiety medications, not a bunch, but I still take a few anxiety medications. If you need to take a bunch of anxiety medications, I mean, whatever you gotta do to function, like more power to you. I don't wanna shame anyone for having anxiety or depression. I don't want to say that like spirituality can't heal you or spirituality can't heal you. You do what's best for you when it comes to treating 
your body and also make sure you're in contact with the health professional so that way they are you're handling everything in a way that will not get you unalive. Now another thing that I did do with the book is that I did modify the breathing, the elemental breathing to be more in line with my comedic spirituality because I've been reading another book. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to review it because like I read it on and off and getting like an actual hard copy of this book is like insanely hard. I think it's like a hundred dollars for it. But this book is called like Sacred Magic or Egyptian Magic. I don't know, I'm gonna leave a photo of it over here, probably. And reading that book, I learned how the Egyptians saw each direction, what element they associated to those directions. So that is what I use and that is what I follow for my elemental directional associations. So that is one thing I changed, but you can do it however you see it in your practice. Cause like I said, everyone practices differently. But throughout the book, Matt does a very good job at linear teaching as he gets us acquainted with our abilities, he then gets us to work with protections and purifications of blood, which I think are key to any beginner because it is very easy to find yourself ungrounded if you're mainly, like I said, working with your upper chakras and or like you're working with a lot of different energies, you can find yourself ungrounded. He goes into explaining that you can find yourself fried if you work with a lot of energies and don't regularly ground. He also explains that it that there are other energies out there and you want to make sure that you're protecting yourself from those other energies and only really working with whatever energies that you want to work with. And as I mentioned before, one of my biggest things that I like about this book is that he does this without tools. And I think it's super important that he does the purification and cleansing and protections without tools because you may find yourself somewhere where you don't have any of your tools available. And like I said, you still wanna be able to work your magic, especially protections and cleansing. So I think that every wish should have this book, if not on your bookshelf, by your bedside, you will refer to it often. I find myself referring to it often again. And also like, you know, sometimes you can't really go and smoke cleanse stuff. Like if you have asthma, you may not be able to smoke cleanse. Sometimes you can't sound cleanse because someone has sensitive ears. Or maybe like, you know, you're out looking at something, like you wanna look at a crystal and sense its energy, but you everyone else's energy has been picked up on it because they've all been touching it. You can easily cleanse the crystal yourself while you're out. So that way you can cleanse it of other people's energies and then just sense its own energy while it's in your hand. So that's why I really, really, really like how he goes over that in this book. Another favorite point that I want to bring up from this book is that Matt does go through and recognize the need for self-knowledge in this book and how it relates to our psychic witch abilities. Again, if you don't relate to the term witch, psychic practitioner abilities. Social media, I'm sure many people are aware of this, it's flooded with witchcraft tips, witch tips, spells, tarot readings, everything like that right now. It's like it wasn't really big before. Whether it be from it being a trend or people are genuinely is interested in waking up. I know a lot of people are super into manifestation and supplementals and stuff like that. I think that Matt addressing the need for self-knowledge is extremely important because it can be so easy for a beginner or just someone who's not ready to enter spirituality thinking solely of like their own outside benefits that they'll get from it and not so much the inner work benefits that they get from spirituality. And that is actually one of the biggest reasons why I have a channel now for on YouTube is to emphasize the need for that inner work, doing that inner work, practicing the inner, inner work because your inner work will then show on the outer, your inner work will help you with the manifestations because you will be aligned. Your inner work will align you to your goals. I also think that it does a very good job addressing that people sometimes look to magic as like a quick fix for problems and it's not meant to be a quick fix for problems. I remember reading somewhere, I don't know if it was in this book or if it was in a different book, but you want to ask yourself before you start doing like any kind of working like can the problem be solved without magic? If the problem can be solved without magic, then it's best to go ahead and solve the problem without magic. Now, say for example, you're wanting like a little bit more luck or favor. I mean, then no problem with doing like a magic spell to, for like success or luck favor. And I think that's extremely important because many people new to the spiritual community just come in thinking that they can use magic to do money spells and stuff, but then are upset because the money spell doesn't work and they don't realize that they have their own internal blockings for that money. Or maybe like they have karmic 
debts or just other blockages that may not even be their own thoughts, but just in general, like generational, that could be impacting it. And the only way you're gonna know that is by doing your self work. You would be surprised at the amount of things that you can pick up by working with your spirit guides, your spiritual team, your ancestors, everyone that is here to make sure that you succeed and reach your highest and greatest good. By working with them, you will be able to learn what blocks you, what is hindering you, where you need to grow areas, you need to work on yourself. So that way you are better aligned to manifesting or making magic out of something. One of the final things that I like about this book is that it includes some basic spells and incantations that allow you to put your lessons and exercises to use so you can actually get a feeling of the energy that's flowing around you through you as you're working with it because like I said Matt expresses in the book many witches will do magical workings but not feel the energies and not know if something was successful or you have psychics that can sense the energies but they like don't really use the energies for anything. So I like that Matt takes time to tie the two together so that both parties, like if you identify just as a psychic and not as a witch, or if you identify as a witch and not as a psychic, you can see that the two are intertwined and you can start to work both of them and take full advantage of that. My final thoughts on this book is that I definitely think it is a must have for your witchy collection like I would put this top shelf well not top shelf I'd probably put it on the middle shelf because I'm short and can't reach shit and I like being able to see what I'm looking for especially since I feel like this is going to be something that you want to use often actually I don't even have it on a shelf I keep it by my bed because I use it that much I think it provides a lot of value and gives you a lot of return reading as I mentioned before you do go back to a lot of these exercises and Matt even emphasizes it throughout the book you want to work on the basics and build on these basics to then be able to do the more advanced stuff but also still you know regularly practice and make sure that you have the basics down he is very good at emphasizing like coming at things with a very childlike and open mind and beginner mindset to make sure that you regularly practice working with your abilities growing your abilities cultivating your abilities this book also does a good job at addressing burnout that many witches or other people may find themselves going through as they go through their spiritual practice, in which case it does recommend that if you experience that burnout to go ahead and do your basics, which I think is very important because at the end of the day, if you're feeling burnout, but you don't want to like get completely disconnected from your practice. And personally, like I feel like I don't want to ever disconnect completely from my spiritual practice. And I like incorporating my spiritual practice into different parts of my day. Like having that sense of always having like something to fall back to because you can always get a takeaway from your basics. You can always get a takeaway from meditation. You can always get a takeaway from prayer. You can always get a takeaway from just basic yoga. Whereas when you get into more advanced stuff like tarot reading, if you find yourself burnt out with tarot reading, which I, yes, I went through a burnout with tarot reading. I stopped reading tarot for quite some time. I would occasionally pull out a deck and do a reading for myself. But I recently did a live reading on my TikTok of Tarot for the Collective. Tried that out for the first time. Let me know what you guys think if you saw that one. But anyways, I felt burnt out with Tarot, but I was doing like other areas of my practice. So I was doing like gratitude journaling. I was doing more or less affirmations. I'm very bad at doing affir affirmations. I need to get myself to do better with those. Or like I was regularly setting intentions with my tea and my water. I would be meditating, different stuff like that definitely what was keeping me practicing despite the fact that I was not working with tarot at the time. Didn't feel drawn to working with tarot. Honestly dreading it to be completely honest because tarot, when I read tarot, I know that a lot of people report getting thirsty when they read. I don't get thirsty. I get tired and unfortunately or fortunately, I mean there's, it's, it's a double-sided coin. I'm on medication for my anxiety and depression that makes me extremely lethargic. I didn't want to have the tiredness that comes with me working with tarot on top of the lethargy that comes with my medication. Even now I still have some hesitance to it because I'm trying to change my mindset on how I see my body working with this medication because right now I have a very negative view of it. In doing so, I'm hoping that like I can start incorporating tarot regularly back into my practice while also being more productive with the with the medications that I'm on. But story for another day, info for, info for another day. This book does a good job of going beyond burnout because Matt 
points out that you may feel very, very confident about your spiritual abilities. However, you may feel like certain abilities are lacking where other ones are extremely strong, or you may feel that you are gifted in other areas and weaker in other areas. So if you don't experience burnout, but you definitely have that sense of imbalance I wouldn't even say it's imbalanced. It's just, like I said, some people are going to be gifted in other areas or some people are going to be naturally inclined to some other areas. However, you can still work on your other gifts so that way you have those at your disposal. So you don't have a chance of getting bored per se because you could choose any of the exercises to work on any of your other abilities. As I also mentioned before, I would recommend this book to anyone even if you don't identify as a witch. Now I know that I am very careful with like the words that I use in terms of addressing stuff in spirituality. Like I don't like using positive, negative, and applications of black and white and stuff like that, or like good, evil, stuff like that, because everything really is subjective. However, I do use the term witch because it is a mainstream term and is a term that most people will recognize, but I also use the term spiritual practitioner or just practitioner because some people may identify with that more. But like I said, witch is the most mainstream, especially right now with a lot of books and places and it being a trend and now we're coming into October so Halloween more witchy stuff so even if you don't identify as a witch maybe you just only read tarot for yourself or maybe you only do workings for yourself and practice for yourself I would still recommend this book I definitely think it has a lot of good gems and value for you especially if you want to proceed to get to more advanced things later I think this book does a good job of giving you that foundation regardless of where you're at in your journey or how you choose to practice your journey whether you're public with it or private with it or both I have this book I use the term witch because it's the most mainstream term I don't keep it on a bookshelf because I find myself using it often and so it's by my bedside because it's just that useful. Another thing that you get out of this book is as Matt mentions but if you're not used to sensing those energies it can be kind of difficult to do like workings and stuff and a lot of people do emphasize the importance of intention through any sort of spiritual practice or any sort of spiritual working. That's gonna be like your most important thing and I definitely feel like this book helps you kind of focus that through teaching you the different practices that it has within it, the different exercises. I feel like this book definitely helps you with the different exercises that it contains in order to be able to have a better sense of what's going on with like your working, whether your working is successful or not successful, stuff like that. It also gives you a better sense of awareness and sensitivity. If you're someone that works with your ancestors regularly, you may find yourself getting clear communications from them. Or like if you work with just your spirit team, you may find yourself getting clearer communications from your spirit team. I work with both. I definitely, okay, so I'm gonna be honest, like as much as I love this book, I still need to put some focus on it. I've been like kind of slacking in my practice lately, but I definitely do see a lot of value in this book. As someone that cultivates knowledge, I definitely see a lot of value, use, potential, readability, a lot of stuff in this book that I think would be very useful to like anyone on their spiritual journey. I also feel like this book does a very good job of application to your life and whatever practice you are because like I said it goes with the all one concept when you um, come into the all one concept you find yourself wanting to communicate with nature and I think that Matt does a great job of outlining how to communicate with nature in a way that's not so vague which is extremely important because nature's energies are gonna be energies that you're gonna regularly work with especially as you regularly do energy work because you don't want to draw on just your own energy the reason you don't want to draw on just your own energy and I kind of touch on this in my chakra video you don't want to draw on just your own energy because you'll feel yourself get tired or worn out. I said that's essentially why I stopped reading tarot. Um, that was like, I would say with tarot, tarot's a little different is what I'll say as how I would describe the energy working and stuff like that because I, I'm not gonna say like, you know, I didn't, I don't think I would have drawn from my own energy in particular, but I'll address that some other time. I think that's for another day. But for communicating with nature, being in touch with nature and stuff like that. I feel like a lot of other spiritual books and a lot of other spiritual practitioners, or if they prefer to be called witches, however you choose to be called, a lot of people discuss, oh, go outside in nature, walk in nature, take nature walks, spend time in nature and stuff like that. That's really all they say. They don't really give you a very clear understanding of connecting with nature. And I feel like Matt does a good job with connecting with nature, especially his routine for 
completing an energy circuit, which I think is one of the most important things you can get out of this book. And I mean, I more or less, I want to say I kind of taught myself the energy circuit, but having another practitioner kind of like confirm that that was the way to do things along with knowing that there are going to be people out there that don't think of that type of thing, I definitely think is super important and is key for the community and making sure that everyone's growing to their fullest potential. My other appreciation for his addressing of communication with nature is that look, I have limited time and focus. As much as I would love to be able to sit down and read spiritual books all day, I split my time between like reading and video gaming and some other shit. So um, I usually just skim stuff on the subject matter with intentions to study deeper at a later point and I feel like even if you were to come and skim through Matt's explanation of working with nature you would like even if you were to skim through it you would still come out of it with a good idea of what to do I mean you could always reference it to go into more detail but I definitely feel like even if you're just skimming it you're gonna have a good idea whereas I feel with other people skim the work or you just listen to it because it could be playing on YouTube teaching it to you it doesn't really sink in where I feel like with Matt's regardless of how you take it in it sinks in unless you do audiobook in that case it may not sink in because like I do have the audiobook version of Psychic Witch but like as I was listening to the I got the audiobook version because I wasn't sure if I wanted to buy the full like actual hard copy but as I was listening to the audio version and I realized that there were exercises in it then I was like okay I need to go ahead and get the full copy because I feel like I'm gonna get more out of it with like a hard copy that I will with the audio audiobook and I was right um so yeah and my goal is with these book reviews you guys will see what's worth spending your money on what's not worth spending your money on or anything like that because some of these spiritual books are like definitely not worth it and so I just want to make sure like you guys know what's what's worth it what's not worth it what's useful what's not useful what actually teaches you something versus what just gives you general knowledge that you could easily find on the internet so with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoy this book review. Please let me know if there's anything in particular that you want me to review. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe button so that way you guys get notified when I post. Please feel free to DM me, message me, or send me anything that you want me to review or look at, or if there's any topics that you want me to go into further detail on. If you found this video helpful, leave a like button. If you want to leave a comment, please leave a black heart comment to let me know that you made it all the way to the end of this video. I would definitely appreciate it. Make sure you're following me on all my other social media channels. I am a Wake and Comedic Divinity here on YouTube, also on TikTok and on Instagram. On Twitter, I am just Comedic Divinity. And then there's the blog, Awaken Comedic Divinity, where you guys can find more information and resources as well. I have a link of YouTubers that I think are really good for teaching you different spiritual things. Also links of, they're also where I get a lot of my information from. So I wanna make sure that I give them the proper credit. So that's why I have a whole list of resources on the blog page. The blog page also does go into a little bit more detail if like you're wanting more in-depth stuff. For example, I did a video on color magic and I wanted to go over both the hot and cold aspects of color magic and the only way I could do that was by doing the blog post because otherwise the color magic video was going to be extremely long for no reason. Maybe I'll do the other half as like the cold aspects of color magic so that way you guys can watch that video if you don't feel like reading the blog but I definitely recommend reading the blog. Thanks again Divinities for watching this video. I'm glad that you guys took time out of your day to watch this and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye!